There's a lot actually to unpack there, but let's really talk is. about um, <laughs> let's, really just, let's just talk about uh, luxury listing presentations, okay. right? Yeah. So, so give us an example of like you're going on a big appointment. What kind of preparation do you do on the seller, on the house, on the neighborhood? More than just pulling the comps, right? Like, give us like just walk us through like a typical. Hey, I'm going on that appointment. It's a seven million, ten million, okay. twenty million, hundred million, whatever the price is. So it's when I got expensive. my first three million dollar listing. I had spent years, my high sale before that was $5 million, mm -hmm. but I'd spent years, we have care, Broker Caravan, which I go to every Tuesday, and I yeah. looked at all the houses. And Why do you do that? You have to know what you're selling. Oh, okay. Preparation. <laughs> Good. Just and checking. I remember I had a friend in the office. She was in the business for 45 years. She was older. Mm -hmm. She'd come with me on Caravan because I wanted a friend to come with me. Yeah. And she'd say to me, why are you wasting your time looking at all these five, ten, fifteen million dollar houses? You don't have buyers for that. I said, I may not today, but if I do tomorrow, I know what to show them. Bingo. So... You know, my high sale was five million, I, but and I would be invited because I was known to the big, big private showings of like twenty million. There weren't mm -hmm. a lot of twenty millions in those days, yeah. and um, so I got the call for this listing appointment, and I knew it was a very expensive one. So I, I was mentally prepared, and every caravan I would get the brochures, and I had literally um, those three ring binders with the mm -hmm. plastic sheets. I had mm -hmm. the brochures, and I had Home Beholds one, I had Bel Air one, I had all the brochures, and I would of all these. the cities. No, no, of, of the actual brochures of the houses. Yes, yes, yes. but I mean, meaning them up by area. In, in Bel Air, yeah. in yeah. Beverly Hills, in Beverly Hills Flats, yeah. and, you know, right? And I so, get them yes. all because I thought if I'm getting a big listing, I know how to do it. So, um, so that I got the mm. call at eight thirty in the morning at the office on a Sunday. This is cell phones, were, iPhones weren't even out yet, right? And they said we want you to come tomorrow. We're going to be leaving the country. We're going to sell the house. And they were friends. Even though I was mentally prepared, he was a major businessman. He had uh, made his company go public, and he sold it for like four hundred million dollars and bought this. At the time, he bought it for like $16 million for his wife for their wedding gift. Mm -hmm. And then they were selling it 10 years later. So I was mentally prepared. I knew the comps, but I wanted to be prepared for any objection he had. Mm -hmm. I spent eight hours preparing a really great presentation. Eight hours I spent that Give day. us an example of what was in it. Oh, comps, specific marketing plan and letter and all that stuff. And I brought all that stuff. And the wife didn't meet. It was We met at 8.30 the next morning. It was just me and him. I'd been to the house. I didn't walk through it. We sat in the entryway of the house on a little sofa, and I literally, and I going back to that more and more, I didn't show anything. Mm -hmm. I said, Steve, yeah. do you absolutely have to sell your home? <laughs> I swear Bill Pipes gosh, would be so proud. The, what, the five minute, the 10 minute, right, the 20 minute. Right, right, yes. Says, well, yes, he says, you know, we're, we're moving out of the country. You know, it was October in yeah. July, because, you know, we're moving out of the country. I said, great. Are you willing to price your home, home to, to sell? sell? And he says, well, what price do you think it should be? I said, it's, it's worth 23 to 24 Wait, you million. didn't do, I study homes and prices every day. So I assume that, remember that, remember yes. that script? I, I, we're like, we're like really dating ourselves right now. I said that right afterwards, now. yeah. Yes. So he, I said, 20, it's worth 23 to 24 million. Yeah. So what should we listed for? It says 26.5. Mm -hmm. He says, no, I'm listed for 30 million. I said, okay. I said, if I sell your home in the next 30, 60 days, is that okay with you? He says, no, because the kids are in school. We're not leaving till July. Got it. I said, okay. So then if that's the case, I need a one-year listing agreement, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And this took a lot of guts. I had written in the contract 6% commission. Yes. And he says, how much is your commission? I said, 6%. Yeah. And he says to me, I'm only paying you $1 million to sell this house. Mm -hmm. So I scratched it out. I wrote in $1 million. We sold a year and two months later for $23.5 million. Yeah. And he paid a $1 million. That's amazing. So that's what he said. So what's beautiful about that and, and I've done this so many times, and you and I just had this conversation earlier today. If you if you prepare really well yep. the day before, yep. you don't always use all the materials, yes. but you know it. You walk in with this sense of confidence. confidence. Like it doesn't matter what they're gonna say, like I'm ready because yeah. I took the time. Yep. Do you think agents that are listening to this right now, maybe an individual that's like, okay, I wanna go into the higher end, should they grab all those high-end brochures? Absolutely. Sh should they go preview all those houses? Absolutely. Should they get to know the communities? Yes. Should they study all the architecture? Yes. Know who the builders are? Go to the know parties. Know who the bad builders are? Yep. Well, before they get invited to the parties, right? Because they may not get invited no, to the true. party. That's true. But you know, one one thing, and I swear you told me this, and this I, I give you credit all the time, so if you didn't, please <laughs> let me know. Um, he's not going to do it now. He's going to say, of course that was me, is you need to take your database and you need to figure out who do you already know that's there. Hmm. Right? Yeah. Like, you remember like like that? Like I was like, yeah, like, well, you need to know who do you know that's already in these communities because right. Right. you probably already have ins. Right. And you know, we're constantly like, how do I market myself to get them to call me? Well, who do right. you know that already lives yeah. in an 850 yeah. or a 900,000 or a million or a 10 yeah. million or a 30 million, yeah. right? Absolutely. And was that you? No, it was not me. <laughs> Honestly, it was not me. Well, I've given you credit for like well, a decade, you. so yes. <laughs> but also now, you know, social media didn't exist 10, 11 years ago, really. Yeah, right. Now it does. And now, 
I was telling people at lunch today, I said, the super rich are part of a private club. They're all on this kind of, not really a private club, but they're all, they go to the same places around right. the world. Right. Like we see our friends in parties in, like, in Miami at the Art Basel this week. Right. Like there's 40 friends that are there. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden this one's having a party. Uh, at Omar's, the new club, and then this one's there. I'm like, oh, my God, you know them? And they're like, oh, my God, you know Christoph? People like that. In that world of high end, they like it that you know their friends. And, right. you know, it's, it's so a how do you So how do you do that on Facebook without being Stockalina? You can't. No. So how do you do it? Because one of my questions, ready? Look at this. Yeah. Marketing, content, networking, and follow-up. Yeah. Let's go to networking. Yeah. I you've, don't done just, a, you've done a pretty good job networking yourself into yeah. some pretty fancy situations. Yeah. What are your three most important hacks for networking effectively, especially if you're looking to move your price range up? Um, I would say number one, what helped us a lot was being involved in charities. Okay. Or, you know, whether it could be homeless youth or saving trees. The number of times I've seen you take the photo of you sleeping on the streets yes. in a, in like on a, like a, on a cardboard on box, a cardboard box, box right? Rain. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, you just do, and it's not charities is not the right word. Helping people or situations that could could use your support and your influence. There you go. I, I don't like, like the word charity. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I started with homeless youth, it came out of the blue. A friend of mine said, well, you know, Covenant House California is looking for a new board member. Was this something you'd consider? I'm like, okay. And I went there and I thought, well, I didn't have a lot of support from adults when I was young with my dreams because mm -hmm. they didn't understand them. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, this is my opportunity to give back to the youth that are on the streets help them see that people care. And if they have a dream and a vision are willing to work hard to get there, there are people that will support them in that effort. That's why I did it. I didn't think about business and meeting rich people. It wasn't right. that, it was just, what can I do to give back to help those that need it? So yeah, that's beautiful. I didn't think if you do right. everything from that perspective of coming from a good place of love, kindness, and goodness, the universe will take care of you. Maybe not when you want to, yeah. just when they choose to. Right. Can yeah. I, I think that's a really important distinction because being involved in these causes is certainly a networking component to your business. Yes. But but I think it's interesting, like a lot of people might be cynical and say like, oh, people only get involved in these things because they want to be able to network with other people. I'm like, no, this what's happening is there's a level of bonding at work here because yeah. you have people like you and like them who are having the same thoughts yeah. right. about, I want to give back yeah, in this right. capacity yeah. because they do care. Yeah. And then you connect over that. Yeah. I just... I, and, I think, yeah. And you like that could be at your church, your yeah, synagogue. Anywhere. That could be, you know, your local yeah. chamber, yeah. right? Business, you know, business groups. Do you guys remember Le Tip? Of course. So I was asked to join Le Tip Beverly Hills many years ago. And I thought, oh, this is great. I'm with 50 people. They're all doctors and lawyers and right. all these. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get a lot of business. Zilcho's nada for four. I mean, they would pass out those referrals because you're right. required to. And it was, yeah. I mean, I'm nothing. Yeah. Um, my refer like when I joined Covenant House, I think, Two week, it was, you know, once a month board meetings mm -hmm. and really helping the mm -hmm. cause. And the president of the board said, you know, I got some properties I want to sell. Can you help me with it? So that started. And then I did other business right. through the board. But I never even thought, honestly, when I joined the board, that was going to happen. I just wanted to help the youth. Yeah. And well, so, that was that was like we talk about authenticity. It's well, so the same word in my head. But, yeah. that, but that is yeah. it, right? Yeah. Like I support CASA. And it's all children's yeah. related things that I support, right? Yeah. So it's like it's very yeah. real for me. Like I'm yeah. not there to like, gosh, you think I'm going to get a coaching client out of this? Yeah. Like it's, and I think yeah. a lot of people network with that intention versus like, hey, can I meet some cool people? We all have something yeah. in common here, yeah. right? Like yeah. let's let's figure it out. Yeah. So so that's one. What's two? One, as you said, is is you know get behind things that you're passionate about. Right. What's number two? What was the question again? <laughs> what are, what are your hacks? top two or three hacks for networking in the, in the higher end? Okay. Um, one-on-one uh, -on -one networking. Mm -hmm. You go to a lot of events, you meet people, you like people, yeah. you have commonalities. Take it to a different level. You know, don't mm -hmm. be cheap. Take them out to lunches and dinners and mm -hmm. get to know them or, mm -hmm. or support their cause. They're doing a charity event. Right. Buy a ticket or buy a table. Yes. If someone asks you something to support them, if you can afford it, do mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Because then they see that you care about them and they will hopefully care about you too down the road. So I think that's an important factor. What I think, I think going back to everything, people want to be in luxury but are afraid or not yeah. confident. If you're afraid and not confident, either you choose to change that mindset and be different, or if you really feel that way instinctively, then maybe it's not your your realm. Right. No one wants to be a luxury agent. I mean, everybody right. wants to be a luxury agent. They think, oh, the big commissions. But as I talked about today, the bigger the commissions, the higher the highs, and the lower the lows. True. True. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna unpack can that I, before we're done. Go. Can I ask a question too? Like when you're at that listing presentation, just going back for a yes. second, yes. you yes. talked yep. about really preparing ahead of time yes. for their objections. Yes. I have a sneaky feeling that the objections you anticipate 
are different than what other agents who might be afraid of that presentation might anticipate? What kind of objections would you might have prepared for? Uh, in my experience, the objections are commonly the price differential. You know, my price is different than theirs. The commission, uh, length of term of contract. Those are really the main objections. I mean, okay. the other stuff. I mean, sometimes people don't want to spend the money on staging or stage it because they live there or whatever. Um, but th- Isn't that funny? Because that's every price range. Yeah. It's true. It's commission, price, and term. That seems to be the number one, yeah. number three things. So, Christoph, we, we love you. Everything you're saying sounds fantastic. But, God, that, you know, like 5% commission? Like, I mean, yeah. I, you know, I just talked to Jason Pantani. He said he'd do it for like four. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Three. <laughs> I get it, Tommy. It we sounds should... like a lot of money, right? I just know that there, you know, I mean, I just feel like we have a beautiful home and it's going to sell quickly. You know, nothing in this area ever comes on the market. When it does, it's gone. Yeah. So just, I just don't feel like I should be overpaying. Yeah. You do have a beautiful home and it probably will sell quickly, but that doesn't always happen. What are you looking for in the agent you choose? I mean, as I said, like we chose you because we love your video first marketing. We, you know, we, we believe in that. You know, I'm a huge fan of that work. Yeah. Um, I think it's that. I think, you know, I mean, obviously multiple people said, oh, Christoph did a great job for us. I actually reached out to a few of your, yes. your people yes. and like actually like got the scoop and everybody said the same thing. You're just warm, you're authentic and you're really good at what you do. Um, and so we want you to like fight for us and, and get us the highest possible price and make this process as easy as possible. It's true. And you know, Jason's an amazing agent. There's no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming you're a businessman. I mean, you built your company, you yeah. made a fortune in that. Yeah. You're a tough negotiator. Yes. So I assume Jason came in, he asked for a full commission and you got him down and negotiated him down to the price, right? I did. You did. I did. Is that the kind of agent you're looking for? Someone that can just like that chop down their commission by one or 2%? The greed in me says yes. I the businessman in me says, I, you know, I hear, I hear what you're saying. I mean, think about it. You're in, you negotiate all the time. Yep. Would you agree that you know one percent in a negotiation on a ten million dollar house is what hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, right? Don't you think that could be gone in a split second? I have the ability and the guts to fight you, a major businessman, to fight for what I believe is right for my commission. Wouldn't you want me on your side in your court on the boxing match fighting for you? Can we just go to 4.75? Well, I'd like to do that, but you like me, right? Yeah. And I like you. And do you feel I can sell your home? God, I love you. Well, let's just get started. <laughs> and often I just say, I'll, I'll do it for started. six. I'll do it for <laughs> six. <laughs> I'm tapping out. No, but commission compression has been really a serious of issue. Of course. And that's why yeah. I bring it up because because yeah. that is, I mean, it is very real. Yeah. Right? It, very but real. It's, but it's very real in every price range. Yeah. yeah. Be really clear. So you were talking about listing presentation and preparation. Did yep. you get everything you wanted there? Around the objections, I, I, it's price, commission, I price, commission, I had one more and, objection. and term. I had time. one more. I wonder how. Yeah. You're throwing another objection? Yes. I didn't know well, how to role play today. Yeah, let's go, buddy. <laughs> he told me I was interrogating. <laughs> Thanks. All right, let's pretend. <laughs> let's, let's go back to the highest price home you've ever sold is $5 million, And okay. you're your first listing presentation for fifteen or something like okay. that. Mm-hmm. And they say, how many homes have you sold in our price segment? Yes, thank you. Uh, well, they didn't say that, luckily. Um, okay. But I say, you know what? I haven't sold many homes in your price range, which is why I'm here today. And that's why you called me. Mm-hmm. I said, there's a lot of agents you're going to meet that sell a lot of homes and they have big teams. Do you want me one-on-one handling this deal for you and really trying to make a name for myself in the luxury market, really doing everything I can day-to-day to promote your home or just having you one of 10 or 15 where you're getting an assistant and other agent that's not really pushing for you? I mean, you have a special, unique home, right? Wouldn't you agree? I, I agree. And and listen, I, I, I believe you're going to hustle for it, no doubt. But What's your network like of other agents in the community? Are you going to be able to position my home in the same way? Well, that's a great question. And it's not just other agents in the community because I'm not like the other brokers where I just put it in the MLS, wait for another broker to co-op sell the house. I'm going to fight to find the buyer for your home. And you know me in the social world, that's what we met at the charity events, right? We have a lot of the same mutual friends. Don't you think I'm going to pick up the phone and call those people and say, hey, you know, I know you've got a great $5 million house, but you've always talked about maybe getting something bigger and better. I've got this listing. It's coming on the market in two weeks. Is that something you want to maybe check out? Because the rich people want something off the market. You're giving them a that's bananas? No, I'm giving it a let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's go. That's bananas. So, when so you, the charity events, he had me at the charity events. Oh, like for we sure. already know the same people. I was yes. like, Done. Yeah, we know the same people. Done. Yeah. So, and I've had clients say to me exactly mm-hmm. that, that I figured, well, you know a lot of the same people as we do. So if we want to sell our house, you'd know the right buyers because these are the kind of people that would buy our house. Bingo. But he's giving you some of the big objections, which is I hear that same stuff. Well, you know, like, hey, they're going to ask me about my circle of influence. If I don't know anybody, they're going to ask me what's the most expensive home you've ever sold. And if it isn't X. And I'm like, 
Do those objections ever I, actually come up? That doesn't happen very Sometimes. often. Sometimes they do. They do. Sometimes. For watching, yes. there's someone on the, yeah, yeah. So let's just say that it's the worst listening presentation ever and they're yeah. asking all the hard questions. Yes. And you get me at that and then I say, well, since it's your first one and it's important to you, will you do it for 4%? I would probably say the same thing if I can't do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or I'll, I will have planned in advance, like this one for 30 million, mm -hmm. I kind of knew in my mind, well, I knew that everyone would come in and ask for five. Yeah. And probably do it for four. But I asked for six and I got, we ended up closing at 5.27%. Right. Which is better than five. Oh, okay. And right. by the way, sure. just, I mean, if you're lucky, if you're looking at the high end, there is, there is, that is the leading market of discounters. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the problem because most agents, in the, especially over mm -hmm. 10, 20 million, right. they come and ask for four. Right, and they split it between six agents. Yeah, Let's exactly. talk about that for a second. Oh, why yeah. Why in the world does a seller want six different agents from five different companies? I never got that. And then, you know, oh, hey, we sold that property for you know $40 million and you made 18. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Like at, after your marketing expenses, everything. So, uh, and I'm, I'm being facetious on that number. Why? Well, What's I think the from mindset a, of from a seller? seller's perspective, I do understand that because mm -hmm. you've got, the five top or four top brokerage right. firms in right. Beverly Hills, yep. all pushing to market for the same cost. Yes. And if you're if you you've got a trophy property like the ones we're talking about mm -hmm. that are 150, 200, 300 million dollars, sure. yeah, I think you're, you're definitely hedging. going to you're going to definitely you know work things out because you know one percent mm -hmm. per broker, one percent of 150 million is still you know mm -hmm. one point five million. Right. So it's still better than you know other ones. So I think you have to. It's a business decision. Right. And if you yeah. really want that, and look, I'm not knocking it because no, you know no, a ton of my our mutual friends that have all been a part of these spectacular yeah. transactions, yeah. Yeah. and everybody's stoked because you got six different people to put out their own just sold card. Yeah, yeah. with so with you know two hundred million dollars on it, yeah. you're like all of you did it, got yeah. it. It's like hiring three CEOs to run your company. Like it's a bit of a redundancy. Yes. but I get it. Yeah. But you know what's interesting? It. You don't see it as much in New York. You don't see it as much in like Aspen. You don't see it as you much see it in, in LA. LA. Yeah. But you see it in LA all the time. All the time. It's and one thing I think if you're getting in the high end market, I don't know about other areas, but I know New York is the same and Beverly Hills, at the high, high end over 50 million plus, it's so cutthroat. I know. And agents will lie and make up stories about you just to get you out of the picture. Sure. It's happened to me where the wife wants me, the lawyers want me, the dog likes me, and then all of a sudden they get a random call or an email from another agent. They even said, oh, blah, blah, blah. I mean, this is a was a $100 million plus listing I was getting. And the seller had told me before she was very private, didn't want any MLS, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And four years before, when it came on off privately on the market, it was in Wall Street Journal, New York Times. Yeah. And I recently. It was an expired it. listing. Uh, it wasn't expired. Yeah, I love that. But no, they didn't call me because that. I didn't yes. Know, it was yeah. Just, it was, yes. Um, so it was in all the new media, and I mm -hmm. reposted it on my site. So we we're about to sign. She'd come, we met twice, actually three times. And she calls me up. She says, uh, You know, I'm very private. And first of all, an agent told me, you took a selfie at a party at my house in my living room and posted it all over social media. I said, well, first of all, it doesn't exist. I never took a photo of myself in your house. So let me talk to this agent. Let's meet face to face and have her present this photo because it doesn't exist. Number one. Yeah. Number two, she says, well, she sent me the three links of the articles that I shared on my website four years before from Wall Street Journal, New York Times and whatever else. She said, I told you I was private and you shared that. I said, that was four years ago. I only met you four months ago. Anyways, I didn't get the listing and it was over a hundred million. Yeah. Because somebody, and I think I know who it was, but anyways, it doesn't matter. Let's drop, let's not drop that name here on the podcast. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> but I do want to know. I want to, I want everyone to hear. So, what is it like uh, to lose a listing like that? How it's you, really I, hard. Yeah. I mean, I get really discouraged. Yeah. And upset, and I go home, and I'm like, Gabrielle, yeah, you don't believe what just happened. She always says to me, and you know her well, that um, if you didn't get it, it's not meant to be for you. Right. And sometimes I don't get it the first time, second time, fourth time, I get mm -hmm. it. Right. F friends of mine. Right that had a house for sale for like four years, five agents, all the top agents. And every time I'm like, I was, she had a jewelry store. I was buying jewelry for my wife. I'm like, mm -hmm. why did not you guys call me to talk about it? So finally, like five years into it, they expired and I actually called them. I said, guys, you know, we've never had a formal presentation. If you don't mind, I'd like to come sit down with you face to face and get the presentation. I met with them. I got the listing. I sold it two weeks later to my own buyer, 6% I remember this. for yeah. $6.5 yeah. million. Dollars. Right. Right. But it, but for five years, every time I would be so discouraged. Right. And I'm like, I'm never buying jewelry from her again. If that's the kind of friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But from them and going to their party at their house, that's how I met the guy that sold the thirty million dollar house. Bingo. So, it, it's hard. We're human beings. It's, yeah. It's hard. We take it. We take it personal. And if you and don't get it because you don't get it, that's fine. But if you don't get it right. because someone's lying and saying stuff about you, that really bothers me. And I wanted to confront the agents, but I was like, leave it be. Don't say anything. Um, and I just have to let the universe take care of it on its own. Right. Otherwise, the universe is unfolding exactly yeah, as it's supposed to. Exactly. Why? Because it is. Yeah.